Thanks, Ben. Um, and thank you to Socrax. Welcome to everyone joining us for this session on, sounds very serious, the conversion of football, music and lifestyle. Uh, football and music, as we've all experienced at some point in our lives, has taken inspiration from each other, from the musicals of the 1920s, which influenced Terrace Chance to George Best as the fifth Beatle, to some of those that can remember the, the FA Cup songs of the 70s and 80s, and the rhythmic samba influence on Brazilian football. In recent years, the world has become more intertwined uh, with football impacting street culture, fashion, rap stars name checking sports stars in their songs, to global celebrities sitting in the boardrooms and the marketing teams of the big brands and talent agencies. We've seen a new wave of collaboration between these two great passion points fused with urban culture. I've got a brilliant panel here today uh, from across the world uh, who are at the heart of some of the biggest and best partnerships uh, in the football industry. So let me introduce them. Uh, David first. Uh, David has, uh, has already been introduced as the SVP brand and integrated marketing of the MLS. He's charged with managing the internal brand function of the top flight soccer, soccer league in the US uh, and Canada. His role uh, is leading the positioning work for the league and key fan touch points, as well as all the campaign and development and marketing, marketing execution. In 2015, David led the complete overhaul of the league brand strategy and design, which resulted in a new identity, reinforcing the progressive tone of the league. Most recently, David created a one soccer campaign, placing the MLS at the heart of culture, shining a light on the incredible fan experience and support and movement. Jennifer, is, uh, who is Senior Director for Soccer in North America, Adidas, uh, has in, implemented a unique blueprint to advance Adidas's global leadership in the sport and drive business in the US. Through strategic business partnerships, multi-platform marketing campaigns, and creative grassroots initiatives, Jennifer works to elevate the Adidas soccer brand, which is enormous and actively reshape the future uh, of sport in America. For more than 13 years, Jennifer has advanced her career at Adidas in various roles in finance, product marketing, and strategy across a variety of sports. James Kirkham has sat across both sides of the fence, and he's the chief business officer at Defected Records. Uh, he de uh, described as a new era, James, of uh, a music company, I would call that Defected. It's a 21 year old dance music institution responsible for countless hits and a community of over 7 million fans across the world. Defectively recently partnered with Heineken to provide a global music stream to celebrate the last eight of the Champions League, um, including bespoke unique, set, unique sets of worldwide locations with Idris Elba, Bob Sinclair, and a variety of other artists. Prior to Defective, James was on the board at Copper 90 for four years, working with clients such as Adidas, Budweiser, Uber, and Nike. James authored the Modern Football Fan Report, a critically acclaimed research piece which detailed the close relationship between music football uh, and fans worldwide. Um, before we dive into uh, the questionnaire, just to remind everyone, if we have time, we will answer questions. So please uh, use the chat function on the panel, I believe on your left or right, I don't know where it'll be. Um, so diving quickly to the questions, David, can I go to you first? Um, what was the moment in your head, I, I think where you sensed that music, street culture and urban culture more widely started to converge and become a real focus in football and the brands that you represent. Yeah, hey Simon, and thanks for having me today, Socrex. So it really, I think, hit three um, points for us. Firstly was we saw front and centre the importance of how music impacted our fans, um, ultimately in the connection that the fans have to music in the game. Also around growth, as we thought about new growth for the league, Music was something that, as we think about building what the league ultimately means and stands for, the idea of going beyond the pitch, beyond the white lines, and understanding how music intersects with a whole manner of things in, in culture and lifestyle was really important, really important to us. The other element to music, I think, is the importance of, of how it can help us build differentiated club brands. And the final piece was, um, I think, the growing connection of musicians back to the sport. We were seeing more and more musicians and artists following our clubs. So it was almost like a confluence of factors were kind of coming together. Um, so if you think about that idea of scale, you think that idea of, of building meaning in a brand, um, the way that our fans live their life, and they were telling us this because we speak to our fans frequently. We have a fan panel. Uh, we track their, their wants, their needs, their likes, their desires. 
music is just so part of who they are and who, who they identify with. When you think about the dressing room, the dressing room is a wash with music. It's a wash with players who are following musicians uh, and artists and how music defines who they are. And when you think about the terrace culture as well and in, in the stands, and the environment of the stadiums, music is everywhere. Music is something that the fans sing throughout. So it was it was inherently part of who we are. We then started working with, to sharpen up our brand, we started to work with an agency called Cornerstone, which um, their day job is the Fader magazine. The Fader magazine, for anyone who doesn't know, really is, is the Bible for, for music culture. Um, there's so many artists who have uh, you know had their first major media piece launch in the theater. So uh, we're working day to day with Cornerstone and the theater on understanding how do we position MLS in that world. Uh, and for us, it, it, it makes a lot of sense because it is authentically part of who we are now. You know, we're just, we're, we're a league that's, that's 25 year old. Uh, so we're starting to really find what makes us special in the world. Uh, and music is, is inherent to that. Uh, we have, so about two or three years ago when we launched our first campaign with Cornerstone, the campaign was called Our Soccer, as you mentioned earlier. We actually put Two Chains, who's an Atlanta rapper, front and center in our campaign spot. And, and we got questions going, why, why are you guys doing this? This doesn't make any sense. How is this authentic to the sport? Two Chains have been a fan of Atlanta from day one. He was a season ticket holder. He wore their shirt in, 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 in the videos that he would do. Um, so as soon as we pushed this out and we launched our campaign, um, it was amazing to see the fans' reaction to that. You'd have one side of fans going, why are you kind of trying to contrive this and why are you trying to kind of force this a little bit? Uh, and other fans were straight away saying, well, no, he's, he's a fan, fan of the club. He supports the club. Look at this music video. Look at him. He's wearing an Atlanta United video. And from that point on, we've authentically been able to connect ourselves back into that culture and to tell that story about music. And it's allowing us to go beyond the court, allowing us to go really beyond the white lines and really start to tell that story of how North American soccer is embracing uh, music. Great. Thanks, David. And Jennifer, Andy Das have had a long relationship with the MLS, right? And one of yes. very few brands that have been there at the beginning uh, in terms of music and street culture. Uh, can you tell us more about the work of Adidas football and the, you know, and the brand generally, not only the MLS, but the heart of street culture and fashion in the US? Yes. Thank you, Simon. Um, yes, the partnership between Adidas and MLS has been a longstanding one. It's uh, existed in one form or another for the past 25 years, essentially since the league's inception. So Dave and I, in partnership with our teams, had the honor of celebrating the 25th anniversary. And um, we held the Forward 25 event, which was this moment that we not only celebrated the jerseys for the league across all 26 teams. We celebrated this idea of sport and culture. And we showcased this through the fact that the jersey designs themselves were the EQT design, which was an iconic nod to the fashion and culture that existed back in the 90s when the league was born. We also chose to help hold the event in New York City in the middle of Fashion Week. So that's a symbol of how football is at the center of culture. And we invited celebrities and influencers from around the league that are actual fans of the game, like David just mentioned. So you had the likes of American football player, DeAndre Hopkins, gaming phenom, Ninja, and the R&B duo, um, Majid Jordan from Toronto. So all of these things really showcased how, how football and culture really collide. And it's just one example of how Adidas football and the brand at large really is at the heart of the intersection of sport and culture. And this is how we position our brand. And we know this resonates with our consumers that essentially um, music and sport, this is central to everything that they do. Thank you, Jeff. And then James, you're, you're in a quite unique position. Uh, you work for Copper 90 for many years and quite a unique uh, platform that sat between music and sport and, and harnessed the power of brands in that world. You now, you now are defected, uh, which, you know, is a, one of those record labels that is at the heart of also popular culture. Have you seen, where have you seen uh, this convergence of sport, music and culture right now? 
I think it's a brilliant point, but it's strangely barely started. And if that's not too paradoxical, it's because I think we all know it. I think we're at a conference right now with this as a theme that it was all very exciting and sort of familiar and the likes of Adidas and the MLS are doing amazing stuff. And yet still there's probably a handful of brilliant examples out there. So I just think that is brilliant opportunity. When we did the piece that you mentioned at the start with Heineken only the other day, that was a kind of a global live stream with a bunch of DJs to celebrate the Champions League. A lot of people going, wow, what an idea. This is football and music. But I thought that feels the most obvious thing in the world <laughs> because many of us have been doing it anyway, yourself, you know, in terms of talent and how that sits and, and bestrides, if you like, both of those passion points. I mean, going back decades, rock stars wanted to be footballers and footballers wanted to be rock stars. And it's kind of no different today. It might just be switch out rock for, you know, grime or rap or dance culture. We're in a generation that's born from shuffles. So the kind of the genre doesn't necessarily matter. We might get into that. But the point is the same. A footballer has respect for that kind of industry, if you want to call it, and vice versa. And that's always been. But my kind of belief for some time has been about very much the nature of modern fans. We're not in that, thankfully, we're not in that world where it's a kind of myopic perspective of a modern fan who is sort of paper thin and only into one thing. We're multifaceted. We're interested in an awful lot of stuff. I love music, but I bloody love football as well. You like fashion, you like style. All of those things are allowed to interrelate uh, and cross over. And it is quite messy. And it's not the easiest thing in the world for people to target and understand. But when you get it right, you get that perfect kind of chemistry that perfect sort of alchemic moment and you know if you look at I still reference something like a Pogba transfer with Stormzy which is kind of crazy because that's a long time ago now and I'm a Man United fan it's a given that I kind of particularly love that but it's so perfectly suited to what ultimately is like a pop promo video to bring those forces and those worlds together so I absolutely believe it's an exciting moment, whether it be what PSG do with their fashion drops, the likes of, you know, the, what Adidas already mentioned, the Thiago Silva kind of moment with Santander, but Glassbury, there's, there's loads of examples now. And yet I think we're only just beginning, which makes it all the more exciting. Yeah, I couldn't agree more, James, on that one. Uh, I look at sports that have got it right, Jennifer, and basketball, we all look at as particularly one in a sport that's really embedded street culture and music into its entire being and how it operates. Do you think that football can reach that level, or soccer can reach that level in the States? Yes, absolutely. Um, I'll answer your question in two parts. One, essentially at a global or international level, um, it's already there, as James mentioned. We might be just in our infancy, but music and football are naturally influencing one another. Um, he referenced the uh, moment that Stormzy announced Paul Pogba going to Manchester United. That was a great moment for our brand and it generated a lot of global conversation and certainly showed the, the two worlds merging. And it resonated. We had 30 million video views, over 3 million shares and 400 articles published on just that announcement. So based on that success in 2018, we actually partnered with Colors to launch um, some of the best international club jerseys of Real Madrid, Manchester United, Juventus, Bayern. We had four artists film in the respective jerseys and those four videos garnered 40 million views. So exactly like James mentioned, there's this magic that happens when you know you get it right of authentically bringing football and music together. Now, the second answer to your question as it relates specific to the states, um, or I will call it the states with Canada, um, and there's this trend happening where organically, um, you know, basketball is giving a nod to football. You see Drake wearing football jerseys. You know, the moment he wore that pink Juventus jersey, it just was like wildfire. Everybody was talking about it. And he's so ingrained within not only music, but also basketball culture. And you see now NBA stars investing in football clubs, whether it be LeBron in Liverpool, Harden in the Houston Dynamo, or Kevin Durant in the Philadelphia Union. You're seeing almost the two worlds combine. So I don't think it's as linear as basketball separate from football. I actually think it will become almost one um, as 
as these worlds of music, basketball and football start to combine here locally. I think the shareholder point is such an interesting point and often so overlooked from Jennifer. Like if you go back decades with the Chicago Bulls and their kind of interface in and around music, it can't help but bear influence, therefore, on the very sport of football and everything in between. Plus, basketball has been a sport that is very naturally compartmentalised, split into little clips and gifs and video moments that are inherently entertaining. And to be entertaining, often sport and music combine to bring them to life through social channels. That's not coincidence that that is so impacting on football right now. The likes of Major League Soccer's kind of content output looks and feels like that in a good way because it's entertaining. You know, Zlatan, when he got off that plane a year or two ago, that moment went around the world in an instant, so beautifully entertaining on all our social streams. But really, that's all born from what was going on in for years, as Jennifer kind of mentioned, the likes of basketball. Yeah, I think yeah. just just to jump on both those points as well, I think basketball, Simon, as, as, as you said, has done a wonderful job of building their brand and what they're all about really leaning in at one genre of music. I think the opportunity for soccer is because of the, just the sheer uh, diversity of the game, the global nature of the game, whether that's reflected in North America or just anywhere else around the world. I think it provides a unique opportunity into music and lifestyle that probably some of the other sports can't get into. So because it is inherently global, I think there's an opportunity. And we do, we look at it this way in North America, we lean into um the different communities that we have so if you think about music and how music manifests itself there's so many genres and subgenres. so if we're thinking about miami and we're building a brand in miami that brand is going to lean more into latino music or edm if we're building a brand in nashville that's going to be leaning more into kind of modern country west coast uh, portland seattle more grunge more guitar based if you think about atlanta it's going to be more hip-hop it's going to be more trap and then that has to come to life in the things that we do, right? So Nashville, again, if I go back to one of our newest clubs, they have a famous guitarist who will provide a guitar lick before every game, and that will start the pre-match presentation. At the end of the game, they actually have a local music shop press a 12-inch piece of vinyl that they give to the man of the match. It's their highlights from the game captured on audio. That then winner of man of the match takes the 12-inch piece of vinyl and throws it up above the head. James Kirkham, I'd love you to launch a 12-inch Nashville single on Defected Records. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it, definitely. <laughs> and then over in Atlanta, they've, their, their supporters group is called the Footy Mob because that is clearly referencing hip-hop and trap music in that city. So I think it's so important for anyone listening to dive into the cultures and the subcultures in the city. And by the way, that means what type of music is resonating in that city? What type of music is that city known for? What type of music is the fan reacting to? And use that as a key injection point into how you think about and build your brand. And in Atlanta, when you have fans singing hip hop songs converted into soccer chants, it doesn't happen anywhere else in the world. And that's yeah. about creating our version of the global game here that references music in a specific way. And I think that's the opportunity with music and soccer. Yeah, and I think I, I, I would say I, I feel I'm doing football a disservice here to a degree, and, and sort of giving more kudos to basketball. But you know, I'm showing my age here, but I remember. Uh, and maybe some of you might or not remember, but you know, a moment in the late 80s and the early 90s where there felt a real interwoven uh, uh, cultural impact between football at the time, the Manchester music scene, the birth of dance music becoming mainstream, not mainstream, but certainly impact of rave culture. You saw things like World in Motion, uh, and you know, uh, which was a song that was created between New Order uh, and the England football team for the 1990 World Cup. The advent of the Premier League. It sort of came after a, you know, a period of social unrest and uh, and political unrest in the UK in the 80s and 90s, and that and that felt it also influenced street culture and what you wore in terms of on your, you know, on your feet and so forth. So, James, I suppose a question to you, you know, do you sense the moment we're in now, which feels like a real sort of counterculture moment, a real where people have an opinion, where athletes are really you know, putting their head above the parrot, the parapet. Do you sense that now football and music is 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 taking lessons from that, and that that will impact uh, this period? I hope so. I don't know about lessons, but I absolutely love every word you, you've said. Creativity from adversity is a fact. It is a historic kind of fact. What you've just said, yeah. You know, likewise, being British, those moments of rave culture coming out of really, you know, the criminal justice bill, Thatcher's kind of. Britain, but you had it from punk in the 70s, you know, it is coming again. When we when we all kind of um, 
I stopped our office work at the start of March. One of the things I said to my team was these moments are can be special creatively. This very strange time and the problems going on in the world, this is a moment you can kind of actually excel. And I, I really believe in that. I think what's particularly interesting right now is you're seeing it from athletes, you're seeing it from talent, but maybe in different in ways that I definitely didn't expect, as in it's not just creativity. So um, if you look at Marcus Rashford, who is, you know, Man United striker, almost single-handedly in the UK, helping sort out child poverty. It's probably still quite British in terms of the messaging. A lot of people around the world might not understand or realise that. He's doing an incredible amount of work, changing legislation. Raheem Sterling, Manchester City, an England footballer, almost became the voice of a generation against racism. Like, these are purpose-driven player kind of modes now that are culturally symbolic. The, the audience and the fans are almost demanding that. They're looking to these, these players to do more with it. So you've got this kind of purpose and you've got creativity too. I mean, we've got two people on the call, you know, the Adidas MLS stuff that was, I think, partly for the oceans. Like, this is what audiences and fans kind of crave. There's creativity at its heart. It's delivered in a creative way. It's exciting. It's leveraging either shirts or, you know, players or talent but it's doing something with it too. So I absolutely believe the time is right now. We've put, we've uh, within defected, almost been frustrated in the opening few months of this kind of global pandemic where perhaps people weren't doing enough. Now we're seeing artists come to the fore, bring in their creativity and they've lifted their heads above the parapet. They want to do more. They can't be at arm's length anymore. They can't be just on a stage and then they're done. Everything's changed. They need this sort of proximity. They need interaction with audiences. They need to frankly do more and add more value in a time like this. So that's only going to kind of fuel creativity in a really positive way. Absolutely. And you mentioned Marcus Rashford there. I mean, we're now seeing uh, incredible opportunities here. I mean, we talked to, you know, as I mentioned, Ryan Reynolds by Wrexham yesterday. You know, Jay Z has signed Marcus Rashford. To, uh, to Rock Nation. Are we going to see more moves like this, David, do you sense? Yeah, I think, you know, it's really interesting. The points that you've both just hit on really point to the power of the individual. I think we live in a society now when we look at kind of consumer trends, the trust that individuals have in, or consumers at large have in individuals versus brands or corporations uh, is so, so powerful. James referenced the Marcus, Marcus Rashford example. I think here in the U.S., we probably referenced the, the Black Players for Change group at MLS for what they're doing to drive change uh, around the social uh, justice message and movement that's happening. The power that people put on the individual for trust in the message is huge. And I think there's so much that when we, again, when we think about the world of music and we think about individual artists or groups of artists, there's so much that the, the business can learn from them as it relates to stuff that James mentioned, proximity to audiences, how they understand their audience, how they package themselves, how they differentiate themselves, how they build a live experience, and what a live experience looks like. There is so, what James, James's point was great on creativity and adversity. I also think for the sports business and the soccer business, looking outside of our world to other businesses, we can get so much inspiration as it relates to ideas we can pull back into sports. And how a musician goes about packaging themselves, positioning themselves and building a live experience and talking to their audience. There's so much for soccer and sports to learn there, I think. We're coming, yeah, we're coming to a natural end. Just quickly, Jennifer, I've got a question from the audience, which is how do Adidas plan to build on the 25 year relationship with the MLS? And do you plan to take that promotion outside of the States? Very Ooh, great question. <laughs> and the answer is, <laughs> yeah, let's, <laughs> let's get this partnership going. I think this is, this is just the infancy of the league yeah. and the partnership and there's so much more to come. So um, we're going to collectively embrace this moment of opportunity for creativity and innovation and uh, look forward to doing it in partnership with the MLS. Amazing. Well, thank you everyone. Um, Fantastic panel. Probably could have spent much longer, I think, talking about this, right? You know, um, hopefully we can carry on. do it another time, maybe over a drink. But um, handing over to Ben in the studio, thank you, uh, James, thank you, Jennifer, thank you, David, uh, and thank you to the audience. Thanks, all.